chapter 15, 1 through 8. Let's go ahead and read. I am the true vine, and my father's the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciple. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Uh, to give me an opportunity to be able to speak your words, Father God, to your people. I pray that I do your, do your uh, scriptures justice. I just pray that you continue to download to me the wisdom that you want me to articulate to your people today. I pray that as we continue to go through this series, we'll find out the different things that we need to improve on. There's a lot of us that need to develop in some areas before we embark on a relationship or, or continue in the relationships that we have now. Thank you, Lord, that as we discussed it, this topic today and really break down John 15, that you give us clarity and insight as we discuss as well. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> See, back in Jesus' day, there was three types of people that surrounded Jesus. There were the Pharisees, there was the crowd, and there was the disciples. The Pharisees were your type of people that was basically Jesus' critics. These were the people that just only followed Jesus because they wanted to try to incriminate him or try to put him in a position where they can prove that he is not all that. For all those who read the Gospels, you understand that Jesus was the man during those three years of his ministry. A lot of people didn't like him, and a lot of people was intimidated or nervous because they knew that this young man is bringing a new way, a new move from God. And they wanted to make sure that people were controlled by the old view. So all the people that was around Jesus were the Pharisees. <clears throat> there was also the crowd. The crowd just really wasn't there for Jesus for who he was. The crowd were people who was just there for the fish plates, and there was only there for the opportunities to get healed. They weren't really around Jesus for him. They just wanted to see another act. They wanted to see another performance. But the disciples were a unique type of individual. These were the people that actually loved him, people that actually followed him because of who he was. Each and every one of us have these three type of people that surround us. We either have those people who are the critics. They criticize everything you do. No matter if it's good, no matter if it's bad, they criticize. They're they always on your last nerve. They're always behind you watching what you're doing. You also have people in your life that's like the crowd. These are the people who basically just follow you because of your gifts. They only follow you because of your talents. They're only around you because they want to milk off you and leech off your success. But there are people that are like disciples, people who are actually your friends, people who are actually there for you. <clears throat> and what Jesus was trying to get through the people's understanding was there were so many people around him, and he wanted to prove who was really in it for me. That's why he says, only my disciples can prove through their fruit. A disciple is someone that lives under a certain level of disciplines. A disciple is a person that says, these disciplines is what I live under. And so when you look at this text, Jesus was trying to distinguish because he said, there's a lot of people that follow me that's not really of me. There's a lot of people who think they identify themselves with Christianity or they identify themselves with me, but they're really not really of me. There's scripture that says there was people that walked among us, but they never finished with us because they left before us. These are people who stay with you for a while. People who never endure to the end. And Jesus was trying to paint a clear picture on how to distinguish what are true disciples, who are people that really follow me. In this installment of our series, we've been talking about courting versus dating. And it's not necessarily to pick a side or say which one is better, but to really highlight the way God wants us to be in relationships, how God wants us to, to pursue. And a lot of us are living a life where we're pursuing someone or allowing ourselves to be pursued, but we're not quite developed. Personal development is very key. There's a lot of us that have great results. There's a lot of us that have great aspirations. There's a lot of things we want to accomplish in life. But we, all that's potential. Potential is not guaranteed. It's something that's untapped. But what a lot of us do, we have the, all these aspirations and hoping to achieve them. But since we didn't personally develop those things that's keeping us from actually fulfilling those things, we actually fall short. Let's look at the scriptures. <clears throat> the first thing that Jesus said, it says, I am the true vine. You can almost see implying that there is some type of other source out there that people get their substance or significance from. If you look at our culture today, we get our definition of love, we get our definition of relationships, we get all this understanding from reality television or from how our parents did it or how our friends are doing and we 
get caught up in this infatuation state where we believe that this is the true way by which we pursue love. How do you define love? Where it influences you because whatever your life is plugged into you, whatever your life is plugged into will determine the results of your life. That's why if you look at yourself, what vine are you plugged into? A vine is something, and for those who are agricultural, for those who farm, for those who are in type of connection of that, which is probably not too many people in here, but I'm going to bring some highlight to that. But a vine is where a plant gets its nutrients. Its nutrients. It's, it's, it's the passageway by which the plant gets its minerals or those things of that nature. It's similar to your vines. I mean, not your vines, but your veins. Your veins is what your blood goes through. In which In your blood cells, you carry all these nutrients, all these minerals that touches all aspects of your body. If anything gets into your bloodstream, it can affect the different parts of your body because if some cancer cell gets into your bloodstream or some leukemia cells get into your bloodstream, it can affect your heart, it can affect your lungs because everything's connected to that vein. So what he's implying is that a lot of people in this life, a lot of people in this world are connected to the wrong source. What influences you today? What is the things you predominantly listen to, the things you predominantly watch? These are the things that influence you, influence how you love, influence how you pursue women, influence how you allow yourself to be pursued. That's why we have to be very careful and analyze ourselves and ask ourselves, what is it am I plugged to? What vine is connected to my life? Because I am the branch. And alpha branch comes fruit. And fruit represents anything that exudes from your life. Fruit is love, joy, and peace. Fruit is how you balance your money. Fruit is how the results of a disciplined life. That's why all of us are a disciple to something. A disciple is no matter what type of discipline you follow, there's people whose disciplines are negative as well as positive. There's people who got positive discipline, so they're conditioned to do certain things. There's a lot of people who have false disciplines. Discipline to smoke. Discipline to sleep around. Discipline to partake in pornography. Discipline to do all these different things that they make these things a habit. That's why if you look at your habits, if you look at the results of your life, it's a direct reflection of your influence. What's influencing you? What's influenced the way you view love? What, what, what influenced you to perceive men a certain way, perceive women a certain way? Because if you don't take a look at your influences, then you'll find yourself living a life based upon what your culture says for you to do. That's why men are wearing skinny jeans now. Men are portraying this image that is portrayed on television. That's why you have people who are women who are, who are adapting their lives based upon what they see. And, and we don't understand that our brains are such like sponge that we'll soak anything that comes between our eyes and our ears. And that's why we have to be very careful what vine are we connected to. Are you connected to the true vine? Jesus had to imply this because he says, if you're connected to anything outside of me, you will guarantee the wither. These are the four things we're going to talk about today for those who are taking notes. <clears throat> Number one is personal identity. Number two is personal awareness. Number three is personal development. And number four is personal results. <laughs> Watch my notes. Can someone give me five things that you feel marriages or relationships demand? What are five things that marriages and relationships require? Just five people give me five things. Who said trust? Trust. Communication. Let me write these down. I hear you. Well, she yelled that from the back. <laughs> she ain't talking ADT. Trust. Oh, y'all didn't get that. It's okay. Trust. Communication. Loyalty. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Trust, communication, loyalty, respect. And what was the one I'm missing one? Security. There we go. Two more. We can go with seven. <laughs> y'all good? Uh-oh, uh -oh, uh oh Compromise. Good one. There you go. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> Y'all going to help me preach this message, okay? So we got seven things. <clears throat> and these seven things is what's going to prove this formula. Jesus was implying, he says, if you connected to me, you will bear much fruit. And we're not talking about fruit based upon how, how much money you have or fruit based upon your successes. He's not talking about fruit based upon how much things you can accumulate. He's not talking about that type of fruit. He's talking more so about character. He's talking more so about you as an individual. What type of fruit are you bearing in your life? What do you do when no one's watching? That type of fruit. So let's look at trust. Since relationships demand these seven things, we should aspire to have these results, pursue these type of results. All men, all women should aim to pursue a level of trust, that I am trustworthy. Each and every one of us should endeavor to have the results of communication. I know how to communicate with a woman. Women know how to communicate with men. I should aspire to learn more about communication. Loyalty. As a man, I should endeavor before I even get into marriage to make sure I pursue the results of loyalty. 
Number four, respect. I should be able to understand how women receive respect. Security, I should be able to understand before a man the results that I want to have is how can I make this woman feel secure? Compromise, I got to be able to understand or pursue the results of compromise. How can I compromise for the betterment of the relationship, not based on compromise for my own selfish needs? And patience. If I want these results, patience, trust, communication, all these different things, I got to make sure what do I identify myself with? Because if I'm not uh, comparing myself or identify myself with an example, a standard by which I live, then how can I endeavor to have these results in my life? That's why you look at trust. The moment that I understand that God is, the, that Jesus is divine, and he, through his saving grace, as Jesus being divine, he's a source by which everything true comes. That's why he said it was good for me to go. It was good for me to leave so the Holy Spirit can come. So the Holy Spirit can get inside of you and enable you to actually do the things that you couldn't do outside of him. And since God is the vine dresser, the vine dresser is the individual who makes sure that the vine is kept right. When I studied this, it showed that the vine had different personalities. There, when you look at grape vines and tree vines, all these different things have unique characteristics about themselves. So the vine dresser had to be there to tend the field. So what Jesus was saying is that I am the vine. I'm the saving grace. I am the way salvation was brought to mankind. And God is the vine dresser. He was the originator of this whole plan. Since he's the originator of this whole plan, if I connect myself to that saving grace, if I connect myself to God and his standards on manhood and his standards on relationship, if I connect myself to that, then it causes me to be aware. If I have an example of how a man should be when it comes to trust, then before I endeavor to get in a relationship, I got to prove myself to be trustworthy. I was talking to a good friend of mine, <clears throat> talking about relationships, and she said something that was very profound. She was implying that she said that her family is a very thorough family, that she's a very thorough individual, that the next guy that comes into her life, they will be thoroughly processed, not thoroughly processed to be jumping over hurdles or going through loops. She's not talking about that. But what she's implying is that there's going to be a thorough process to prove, is this man prideful? Is this man going to have any lust issues that's going to prove or result into infidelity? Is this person good with their money? These are the process that she said her husband would have to go through in order to pass to see if she can be with him. And I, I begin to think about it. I say that's so profound because if a man truly thoroughly processed himself before her thorough process, then a the process by which he's, he's being processed would not be long because he will already look at himself and say, what kind of lust issues do I have? He will already look at himself and say, am I proven to be trustworthy? He would be able to look at himself, am I able to communicate? That's why the problem is we jump into relationships without thoroughly processing ourselves. That's why if you look at marriage, marriage is something for mature people only. Marriage is not for immature people. Mar marriage is not for boys and girls. But you see these people jump to the lines, in front of the lines, to pursue this lifestyle because of all the glitz and the glamour that society paints for it. But they fail to realize that an unfaithful man, an unfaithful woman, an untrustworthy individual, a person who's not patient, these type of things cannot survive in a marriage. That's why if you look at reality television, I was watching Mary and the Gang. I don't know if y'all watched that. Not really a good reality show, but I did it to do some research. And basically the game and his wife, or his wife-to-be, were in a complication. He was always traveling, was never home. She got upset because the marriage was two weeks away. And what she was getting upset about, oh, he don't know how to communicate, or she was too caught up in the past. But you have the game talking about, well, shoot, you know what a rapper, you know what comes with being a rapper, you know what comes with this type of lifestyle, you should just suck it up and live with it. And I begin to look at these different things and I say, look at the results of this marriage or soon to be marriage. Look at the results of this relationship. Negative results come from negative or failing to prepare for it. That's why all these things, red flags are birthing. That's why if you don't take the time to thoroughly process someone, you'll be blind to see the red flags. And many of us are flapping red flags ourselves. We got to look at ourselves and say, what are those things in my life that I need to be aware of? Because no matter how I endeavor to be trustworthy, no matter how I endeavor to communicate well, no matter how I endeavor to be loyal, if I don't become personally aware with me and look at myself, that's why God says the moment that you repent and you come into this, this saving grace called salvation, I sent the Holy Spirit to make you consciously aware of everything that you need to do. The Holy Spirit never gets you caught up on what you've done. He never condemns you. He gets you caught up on where you need to develop. That's why he says, look at your life. Are you trustworthy? How's your communication? These are the various things that marriages and relationships demand, but we fail to pass those tests. It's funny. Before Isaac hired me, he had to examine my requirements. He had to examine my resume. He had to examine if I'm, if I'm capable of fulfilling the job. 
All these different things have processes to prove whether or not a person is ready, but we don't have that same process when we're proving to find someone for ourselves. Is it because we're so insecure? Is it because we're so, so empty on the inside that we'll accept anyone with the offer? What if you took the time to thoroughly process the individual, or what if you took the time to become personally aware of you? What fruit in your life is rottening? Let's look at, turn with me to Matthew chapter 12. Y'all all right? Y'all learning something? All right. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 12, verses 33. And this analogy is going to bring everything home. All right, verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good. Oh, sorry. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. Jesus was snapping on his haters again. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person out of the good treasure bring forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure. Can someone get me a napkin, please? I'm sweating like a... Tremendously sweating up here. <laughs> For out of the abundance of the heart, <clears throat> the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure bring forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure bring forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account. It's a new Bible, so you know how the pages stick together. Careless word they speak, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. That's why if you look at our culture today, Jesus was making an analogy based upon us being trees. If I walk up to a tree, I don't really know what type of tree it is just by the bark. I, I, I can't tell the tree if it's a tree, what kind of tree it is by its leaves. I can't tell a tree based upon what I see on the outside. I have to look up to see what type of fruit it bears. Appreciate you, man. Give it up for John. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. But when you look at a tree, you don't look at its bark, you don't look at its roots, you don't look at its leaves to determine what type of tree it is. You look at its fruit. What Jesus was implying by is that this culture will either make you a good tree or a negative tree. Because they understand if I can make you as an individual negative, then whatever vine you're connected to will produce these fruits in your life where you impatient, where you're untrustworthy, where you don't communicate, where you don't have all these different traits. That's why we have to be very careful what we look at and what we listen to. We got to be very careful with friends we surround ourselves because usually those are the prominent influence that determine what we are today. That's why before I can endeavor to have these results in my life, I have to be personally aware. And when I'm personally aware, it leads me to personal development. Let's look at number three, personal development. A good friend of mine took me to go see a movie for my birthday. It was called Jack Reacher. Tom Cruise's movie, Jack Reacher. <clears throat> and one thing that I learned, about, learned from that movie was this, is that the sniper in the movie, for those who didn't see it, I'm not going to mess up the movie for you. I'm going to give you what you get in the previews. But this individual who was a sniper was, 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 was convicted or was being pursued to be the killer of a certain amount of people. And one thing I learned about it was is that this individual practiced day after day and week after week to be one of the best snipers around. And it showed me that they continue to talk because they said for him to do what he did, he would have had to abide or adapt himself into this type of practice that would make him one of the best snipers, that it was also muscle memory, that he practiced so much that it was almost automatic. It kind of reminds me of a Kobe Bryant or an athlete that Kobe Bryant is one of the most unstoppable players in the NBA because he practiced so much at his skill. That he is so engulfed into his career and so engulfed in the game of basketball that he endeavors to be the best. Since he endeavors to be the best, he practiced so much that no matter what part of the court, if he practices 50 shots here and 50 shots there, 1,000 shots here a week, 1,000 shots there, he makes sure he goes to where his muscle memory is. He makes sure he goes to a place on the court where he is the most effective. That's why when Jesus said, if you abide in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. We, we have lost the sight of personal development. I was reading this book right here, and everyone should get this book. It's John Maxwell's 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And the first chapter just rocked the mess out of me because he said, you know what, this young man, his mentor came to him and said, do you have a plan for growth? And John Maxwell was like, well, yeah, I got a plan. And he was like, I got all these accomplishments. I'm very successful. I'm a, one of the top preachers in the country. I have all these different accolades and all these accomplishments. But he said, I'm not talking about accomplishments. I'm asking, do you have a plan for your growth? Do you have a plan to grow? Do you, are you intentional about growing? 
Are you intentional to make sure that you're an individual that is, that is, that is trustworthy, an individual who has communication skills, a person who is loyal? Do you have a plan to grow? We get so distracted in our culture to the point where we jump in these relationships, not analyzing ourselves to say, am I even ready? Imagine you took the time to develop those areas in your life. I guarantee if I ask you what are the top five things you need to grow, they can pop up quickly in your mind. What are those top five things you need to grow? What is causing you to neglect those things to grow? Because it doesn't matter what results in life you want. I don't care how much money you want in life. <clears throat> I don't care what type of marriage you want. If you don't take the time to develop yourself now, before you get into that relationship, you will find out that you have the various things in your life that's going to ultimately destroy that marriage. Interview the gang. Interview all these rappers. Interview all these athletes. Interview all these people who was only married for two years and didn't last because they found out that marriage is like a, is like a what's that little thing that makes things bigger? A little glass thing. Magnifying glass. It magnifies the issues of each person in it. Because if a person has those issues in their life, if a person still has those things in their life, the standards of marriage, the pressures of marriage, the requirements of marriage will put you in a place where you're incapable to upholding those different things. And you wonder why these people get so caught up. Well, let me stay with him because we have a child with him. Or let me stay with her because he's my baby mama. These are the wrong reasons to pursue relationships. It's the wrong reasons because we pursue these things out of time, out of adjustment, and we not even develop. And we wonder why we have the issues that we have. We wonder why there's more divorces. We wonder why we are unsuccessful in the various thing that was a gift to all mankind. Look at your life today. Where do you need to develop? Because I guarantee you, ladies, you don't want no man who's only 80% complete. You don't want a man who's only 95% complete. We're not talking about perfection. We're talking about wholeness. I got to make sure I look at my life and ask myself, how do I view money? How do I manage money? Because if a woman wants security and stability, I got to make sure I got a J-O-B. I got to make sure I have a trust where they have a proven track record. That's why every woman should be like the IRS. Every man should be like the IRS. The IRS don't care about how many people come to your event. The IRS don't care about how much food you give. They're going to look at your account records to see are you still, are you utilizing the money? Are you utilizing the opportunity to be effective? That's why all of us have to look at life and say, young man or young woman who's pursuing you, or if you're pursuing a young lady, you got to ask yourself, what are those things in your life that can damage me? What are those baggages in your life? What are those things that you need to develop? Because he says, anyone that's not a part of me, every branch that's not connected to this vine will wither. Every individual who's not connected to God will wither. Every relationship that's not in God will wither away. That's why God says, for those who are bearing some fruit, he'll prune you. That's why you see why God ain't brought the man in your life yet. You wonder why you don't have that lady in your life now because he's trying to prune you so you can bear more fruit. He wants to make you more loving. He wants to make you more kind. He wants to make you more patient. He wants to make you more committed. He wants you to make you more focused. But if we keep backing against or pulling away from God's patience and his plan to develop us, if we keep pushing away from those different things, we'll always find ourselves falling short. What are the issues in your life? Because if you don't have that personal identity of who God is and what manhood is, if I don't understand what God determined for manhood is, if I don't read the Proverbs, if I don't read the scriptures to find out what he has called manhood to be, then I will not be aware of my personal issues. And if I'm not personally aware of my personal issues, then I will lack development. And if I lack development, I won't have these seven things evident in a marriage. When was the last time you looked at yourself? It's funny, we write a list about the woman we want, the man we want. But we never write that that's the man or woman. Am I the man and woman that I really want? Am I that person? See, I got to look at my life and say, man, before I even pursue a young lady, before I ever even try to go after her to pursue her for marriage, I got to look at my life. Because if she's going to thoroughly process me and her family's going to thoroughly process me, and if I'm going to go all these checks and balances, I want to make sure that I'm passed, cleared every time. Because if I, come, if I join her with a woman that God is God's daughter, she's going to do that certain thing. Because she's going to make sure before I join myself to a man, I got to make sure, is he loyal? Does he communicate? Is he trustworthy? Is he committed? Is he faithful? Does he have these different traits? When a building is being built, we look at the skyscrapers or you look at houses that's being built. They have these things connected to it called support systems. A support system is to keep the house in place as it's being built. These support systems, this is how you develop. As my house, as my life is being built, I got to have support systems anchored onto my life so that as I'm being built, no matter what storms come in my life, no matter what happens, that I still stay in position until I'm fully finished. 
These support systems are your accountability people. These are people who are, you've given the ability to account for your life. That's why every man should have some type of man in his life to ensure that he is trustworthy. That's how you develop. Who do I have in my life to check me? Who do I have in my life to ask me those tough questions? Who do I allow in my life to be an accountant in my life that says, Josh, where are you in this area? Let me see your books. Let me see your life. Let me check to see are you spending your life right so that you can be checked and balanced and sharpened by another iron so that when I meet with that young lady, she can interview all those people who was keeping me in check. Do you have accountability in your life? Who is taking account of you? Because if you don't have that support system on your life, you're going to find out that even though one brick may fall off, another brick falls off, that when a person moves into your house, you are, you are damnable because now you are not cleared to be used for someone to live in it because you didn't have those support systems in your life. What are those boundaries in your life? If you're aware of certain sins in your life, if you're aware of certain issues in your life, if you're aware that you have these issues that's keeping you from being whole, that's keeping you from being the man of God that you're supposed to be or the woman of God that you're supposed to be, if you don't have those different boundaries in your life to ensure that you don't partake in those different things, then you're going to fail as well. That's why God ensures. He says, you know what? I'm not going to bring no wife into your life if you still have this issue. So you can't get rid of an issue a night before the wedding. That's what the game was going through. The game and his, I forgot his girlfriend's name. Two weeks before their marriage, they're having issues. We're not talking about issues about your breath stink or, or you just frustrating or something. We ain't talking about those issues, superficial stuff. We're talking about infidelity type issues. We're talking about communication type issues. We're talking about these type of things two weeks before you get married. See, you, just because you say I do, I do doesn't change anything. That's why how you practice in your single life is how you're going to perform in your married life. What you practice the night before your marriage or what type of person you are before your marriage, I do doesn't change. The kiss at the altar doesn't change it. You're still going to be that same person the night before your marriage as you are the night after. That's why the look at ourselves says, have I been proven? Am I even elevating? Am I even developing? Are you a, different, are you a better person today than you was last year? Are you a different person now? Are you a more mature person? When was the last time you looked at pornography? When was the last time you slept with somebody? When was the last time you did all these different things? If you're doing those things now and expect to have a lasting marriage tomorrow, you're not going to have it. You have to be a person that says, I went a day without it, a week without it, and a week turns to a month, and a month turns to a year. That's how you exclude these different sins out of your life so that when you are in a relationship with a person, you have been proven. You have what it takes to be trustworthy. You actually have your heart has been so conformed to the point to where you love only one woman, not 10. Now you love one man, not 50. And so you're in a position where you are capable of fulfilling the standards of marriage. Are you that individual? What is that process that you need to be thoroughly developed? Because we can't get, I'm telling you, man, young man, don't pursue a girl if you're not ready. Ladies, don't put yourself out there to be pursued if you're not ready. That's the tragedy. We put ourselves out there too soon. We put ourselves out there before we even develop and we wonder why we're having these infatuation-like issues. Oh, he ain't call me, and she ain't text me, she ain't do this for me. We get so little kid-like, and we wonder why we're not even capable of handling the, the, the base level requirements of marriage. That's why before I even pursue, pursue a woman, I got to make sure am I that individual. Because I cannot be a whole, I cannot endeavor to be a father or a husband if I'm not whole as a man. If I'm not who I am individually, if I don't allow myself to be rooted in God for a season, let me, let me connect myself to the true vine, not some false vine. Let me connect myself to Christ, and as I connect myself to him, he will make me aware of what I need to develop. And as he makes me aware of how, what I need to develop, he will bring in a support system so I can develop. And so when I am developed, I can enjoy the fruits of my labor. What type of fruit is in your life? Because some, some of us got real nice-looking fruits. You ever been into an apple that looked good on the outside but was rotten on the inside? We have to check our life. You as a branch, you got to ask yourself, where is my life? Is my life connected to God? Is my life connected to him? Because if I'm not connected to him, then I will not bear forth that fruit. When you talk about fruit, it's talking about love. It's talking about joy. It's talking about patience. It's talking about all these different things. Am I a person that love without limit? Am I a person that's content with what I have? Am I a person that's long-suffering? These are the fruits that God wants to develop in your life. If you don't have this fruit evident in your life, you're going to be like a tree that may look good and it may look strong. And it may have all the different things to prove that it's bearing forth fruit. But once you bite into that person's life, once you invest your life into that person's life, you find out that person was rotten on the inside. 
Y'all all right, man? Y'all ain't no hallelujah, no amen, or nothing, nothing. <clears throat> Let's go back to John, and I'm up. Five minutes, I'm wrap it up. <clears throat> <clears throat> this is serious, man, because we should strive to intentionally grow. We should strive to be the, I, my, my goal is to be a better man next month than I am now. Personal development never stops. Every person who's in a relationship right now, everyone who's married right now, you can't just become complacent. You can't become stagnant. You got to always sharpen your gift. You can sharpen who you are. You got to always continue to purposely grow. Because the moment that you disconnect yourself to God or the moment you just disconnect yourself to growth, that's when you begin to wither. Look at your life. Are you withering? Is your money withering? Is your time withering? Are your relationships withering? Because it may be a re direct reflection that you are not plugged into God. It says, I am the true vine. Basically, Jesus was saying that I am the only true vine. And if, it's only in me that you get your life source. It's only through this saving grace that before I, before I even came, it was, a, it was a need for me. And he says, my father's the vine dress. He's the one that originated all these things. And he said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, every person who says I'm a disciple of God, every person that says I follow God does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. And what that means is he takes the time to make sure that you bear more fruit. That's why a lot of us, we wonder why that door was closed. The reason why you had to leave that town, the reason why that man left you, the reason why that woman left you. He said, let me prune this off of your life. Let me strip this job out your life. Let me strip all these things out your life so that you can be pruned, so that you can bear more fruit in the future. Verse number four, if you abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. And we talked about that, about how a person abides. If I abide in God, my relationship has to be thriving. I got to be one with God before I'm one with a woman. You don't want no man who's halfway into God. You don't want a woman that's halfway into God and expect her and him to be one with you. Because the first relationship I got to make sure I, that's thriving first is not my relationship with my wife or relationship with my family. It's my relationship with God because if I'm connected to him, that's how I can lead a family. Any man that's not connected to God won't know how to lead a family because who's leading him? Whoever's leading him is where the family's going to go. That's why we have to abide in God to the point where it becomes muscle memory. I have to be so one with God that I'm like him, that I, when it comes to me actually becoming a man, I may be nervous. I may be nervous when it's time to get married. I may be like, God, how am I going to lead this family? But if I'm connected to him, I'll be able to lead it. Because since I abide in him since a, for a long time as a single person, then by the time I'm married, it's going to be like muscle memory. I've been practicing this for so long. I've been committed to it for so long. I have accountability around me to make sure I've done this for so long. I have all these things checking and balancing me to ensure that I'm a man of God. Just because he says he's a man of God doesn't mean he is. Just because that tree looks good don't mean that it's good. That's why we can't be caught up on what well, he said that he was the one for me and all these different things. Just because he looks good, all these different things, that doesn't mean he is good. Just because she's tall and just because she looks good or smells good don't mean that she's it. Time proves everything. And it's so sad it won't let time reveal everything. If you give yourself time, if you stay dedicated to a certain level of disciplines, if you say, I am a disciple of God first and I'm going to pursue him, then God will say, let time prove whether or not he's committed. Because like I said last week, any person who's thirsty, any person who's overly desperate for something, the moment that you don't supply his thirst, that individual leaves. That's why time will prove whether or not a person is in your life for you. Because the moment you don't give him sex, the moment you don't go down on him, the moment you don't do all these things for her, the moment you don't portray these different things that he is thirsty or she's thirsty after of, I guarantee you she's gone. Go ahead and lift up those standards that God requires for women. Wait till you're married. Do all these different things. We'll see how long that man stay. But what happens is I just want somebody to hold me. I just want somebody to be there. When we get into that state of mind, we always find ourselves not consciously aware of who we are. We lack development, and we, no longer, we never get to the results that we have been praying for, writing letters about, and all these different things we say. This is what I want in life. Many of us are missing out on great opportunities because we're not developing. Success is when opportunity meets preparation. That's what true success happens. We miss out on opportunities because we're not prepared for it. How many of us missed out on t t plenty of opportunities because we wasn't developed? We wasn't prepared. I want to make sure that when the opportunity comes for me to meet the woman of my dreams, I want to make sure that I've prepared for so long that when it comes, it's a success. 
I don't want her to pass me by because I wasn't ready. I don't want to have to settle for a second tier or a third tier or a fourth tier because I allowed my life to be sucked down so low. Where are you lacking development? <clears throat> Without, boy, I'm sweating. Boy, it's hot in here, man. Man, I'm preaching like a, anyway. Jesus did this for us. Around Jesus was a lot of people. It was the Pharisees. It was the crowd. It was the disciples. A lot of people around him. And Jesus allowed the test of life to prove who was really there for them or for him. When I understand that I need to be a disciple of God, I have to be plugged into that vine. I have to be so aware that I am so desperate in need of a Savior. That's why the Bible says, if any people, for my people who are called by my name, they must first humble themselves. They must first pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Success always begins with humility. In order for me to come to God and say, God, I have to be aware that I am a sinner. I have to be aware that I need him. I have to be aware that I cannot be that man I'm supposed to be. I cannot lead a home without him. Until I get to that point of repentance, I'll never have the results in life. Because it's the moment that I repent that I can become connected with God. And when I'm connected with him, he'll say, baby boy, this is what you need to work on. Baby girl, this is what you need to work on. Because what I have for you requires you to appear, appear to these different standards. That's why God says you can settle for anything. But if you don't take time to wait for who I have, then you will always fail short. And what happens is we don't want, we don't want to walk with God and let him develop us or make us into more patient individuals. Because we want these different things now. Imagine the things that you want now that you're not prepared for. You know you're going to be able to, you can't handle that without him. Today I want you to look at these different things. And we're going to have an exercise. And I believe uh, Danielle will be writing a blog. For those who are new, we have a blog. If you go to our website, imunplugged.com or unpluggedcharlotte.org, if you go to one of those websites, you will see a Tumblr icon. That's where we're going to have all of our uh, exercises. And what I want you to think about today is think about this. What are the different results in my life? I want you to write the results of your life down. I want you to write down what you aspire to be, what you want to accomplish as an individual. I want you to write these seven things down. If you, this video will be up tomorrow, so for those who don't have notes to take it. I want you to write these seven things down. Trust, communication, loyalty, respect, security, compromise, and patience. And I want you to write those different things down. When you look at the results of life, you've got to also ask yourself, <clears throat> What are the issues in my life that's keeping me from getting these results? Repeat what now? Oh, the seven things, I'm sorry. Trustworthiness or trust, communication, loyalty, respect, security, compromise, patience. And I want you to look at those different things and ask yourself, in these seven things, where am I failing? Am I a trustworthy individual? Do I understand how men and women communicate? Am I loyal? Do I have habits that prove that I'm loyal? Do I respect? That's why God gave you parents first to prove whether you respect. How you talk to your mom, how you talk to your dad shows how you're going to talk to your husband and your wife. Security. For fellas, am I, am I, am, am I in a position where I can be... I can, Give a woman security and stability, not with just finance, not with just a place to stay. But can I give her emotional security? Can I be that priest over my home? Can I be the person that can be able to bring that spiritual security as well? Compromise. Am I willing to compromise to benefit my relationship? Not compromise to, to, to damage your relationship, but am I willing to compromise for the bettering, overall bettering of my relationship? And am I a patient individual? If I look at these things and I become aware of it, because I see what the Bible says about it. And I see what God says about biblical manhood and biblical womanhood. When I find out what those things are, I'll be able to say, okay, I'm personally aware of these five or seven things that I am not good at. And since I'm not good at those things, I'll put myself in a position to develop it. Next thing you're going to write is, what can I put in my life to ensure that I develop in this area? Who are my accountability? Who, what are those boundaries in my life? What are these different things that are going to ensure that I've been proven to be trustworthy, that I've been proven to be loyal, that I've been proven to be respectful, etc.? Before you can get into a relationship, before you can court a girl, before you can allow yourself to be pursued, you've got to ask yourself these questions. Am I developed? 
and my whole. Because no matter what type of puzzle you try to put together, if you're missing one piece, that puzzle will never be whole. What is that puzzle piece in your life that's missing? And it's funny when we're doing all these puzzle things and we try to put puzzles together, no one can find that missing piece. But thank God that we know a God that can find that missing piece in your life to ensure that you become whole. I'd rather pursue wholeness more than millions. I'd rather be whole as a man before I can be loving the life of marriage. I want to make sure that I'm whole because if I'm whole now, I'm guaranteed to be an anchor. I'm guaranteed to be a rock in my relationship and in my family. But if I lack the opportunity to grow, if I'm not intentional about being better as an individual, your marriage won't last. Let's go ahead and pray. <clears throat> and before we pray, <laughs> oh, it's a trick, you guys. But if you have a bucket, right, we have a bucket right here for those who have any questions. We have no cards on your tables to ask any questions that you want. And it's just me on the panel today, so you can give me all the tough ones. So there goes our bucket right there. But let's go ahead and pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for this time for us to pray. I pray, Father God, that they learned something today and, and they looked at them lives to see where can I develop. That before I can get into a relationship, before I can be a man of God, before I can be this individual, I have to be connected to you. Make these people personally aware of the things they need to work on, God. Thank you, Lord, for bringing them the courage and the fortitude inside of themselves to develop in those different areas. And thank you, God, that they'll be inspired to pursue these results so that when they stand at the altar of their wedding, Father God, they can feel confident and sure that they have what it takes to uphold the boundaries, to uphold the weight that comes with marriage. And we thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen.